There are literally hundreds of Linux distributions out there, and it's rare that I see a new Linux distribution that I've never heard of before that kind of shocks me. Like, I'm genuinely curious about why this thing exists. And today I came across one that just blows my mind. Window Maker Live. So this uses the old Window Maker window manager for those that are not familiar with window maker there's a reason you're not familiar with it this is a window manager from like 30 years ago 35 years ago it's been around for a long long time i'm talking about at the very beginning of linux you know we're going back way back into the 90s for this thing and it's kind of ugly it's kind of hideous looking <laughs> by modern standards honestly it's kind of confusing to use i've used window maker on a couple of occasions in the past i can't remember if i've ever did any videos on it uh, way back in the the early days of my channel i know i did the obscure window manager series where i looked at uh, about 10 or 12 kind of obscure window managers that in some cases not a lot of people had heard of. I don't think I did Window Maker on that one. I know I did FVWM, which is another very similar looking window manager that's also very dated back from the 1990s. So, you know, this has me interested. Window Maker Live. It's basically Debian stable with Window Maker. And I was wondering if this was their very first release or not, and uh, oddly enough, they've actually had previous releases. The problem was the last release before this one that was just dropped here in the last day or two was way back in 2014. September 20th of 2014 was the previous release. So nine years between releases. So that's nice that a distribution that was kind of dormant, if not dead, is now back from the grave essentially so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and download window maker live their isos are hosted over on sourceforge and i'm going to spin this up in a vm and i'm just going to take a look at it we'll run the live environment in a vm i'm not going to run through an installation because the installation is just a debian installation again this is basically just an alternative way to install debian essentially if you want debian stable with you know a very minimal window manager already installed window maker this is probably a, a way for you to go here. So I'm booting directly off of the ISO. This is essentially like running a live USB stick. So, you know, I'm doing this in a virtual machine, so I'm just running directly off the ISO. We're in our desktop environment essentially here, right? This is Window Maker. There's really not much to it. By default, it doesn't even draw a wallpaper. You just have a solid color for a background. You have your little paper clip icon here that says Desk 1, so I guess this would be our desktops. And if I double click, um, by the way, a lot of the buttons, you'll have to double click for any kind of actions. And that's kind of an old school thing. Nowadays, a lot of modern desktops are moving toward a single click action for most things, but you'll double click. For example, if I double clicked this quick launcher here with the Debian installer, you, know, you can see the install guide, start installation. So if I launched it, uh, it actually launches me back out. To the boot menu where I would actually have to install Window Maker Live. So this would be where you'd probably run through the standard Debian Incurses installer. I'm not going to do that. You guys have seen Debian installed before. And it boots us back into our live environment again. Of course, the display is all messed up. So I'm going to right click on the desktop. So we have a right click menu similar to things like OpenBox and Fluxbox and those kinds of window managers, right? Window Maker has that right click menu where I could search under applications. There is an application finder. Let's see what they're using here. This is the XFCE application finder. And if I search for display, yep, right there. Let's open XFCE's display program and I will use the GUI tool to change to a 1920 by 1080 resolution, apply, and keep this configuration. And then we need to restart the window manager because obviously when I change the screen resolution, all the widgets are not in the correct spot. So if I right click and go to session menu and restart GUI, which it looks like a uh, mod four plus the home key is a key binding for that. I don't have a home key readily available on my keyboard, unfortunately, so I'll just click on it, which accomplishes the same thing there. We get a little welcome screen here, which there's not much to it. We have what is new, so what's new, I guess, in this release. So this is the release notes. Uh, known issues, so there's some bugs. Uh, please provide corrections for machine translated text via this email. So there, 
they're having problems with uh, some of the uh, translations, the internationalization, especially uh, revolving around the window maker, window manager. So if anybody wants to help them with translations, they they can use your help. There is also a button for the change log. So what has changed between releases? It's probably a change log for Window Maker. Yeah, it is. Window Maker does actually see development. I actually went to the windowmaker.org website and it sees a release. I don't know, like every year or so. Like people are actively still working on Window Maker. Now I don't know if you noticed, but when the welcome screen was up, I had a little box, a little widget down here in the bottom left hand. Uh, corner of the screen here letting me know it was open so if i open something that doesn't already have a widget over here on the right hand side so the application finder so there's not already a box for it over here so it's going to put it over here so we're going to get it down here at the bottom of the screen let me just close that and that goes away over here on the right hand side of the screen let's see what these are just hovering over them really doesn't do much although i can tell what some of them do just by the icons let me double click this one so this is the window maker preferences so if you click on various things you can go in here and adjust certain settings for window maker or as how it looks, some of the functionality, I'm sure you can change some of the key bindings, etc. I'm not going to cover any of that on camera for the most part. They've probably got some sensible defaults already set for this, so I don't want to mess with it. This is a live environment anyway, it's not properly installed, so anything I do here wouldn't be saved permanently. And we've got the Swiss Army knife here. I'm wondering what this is, probably like a settings manager or a control center. No, it's a, <laughs> it's almost like a, a sub menu, like a drawer full of other applications so this one here obviously would be our text editor let's see what text editor they're, they're using so if I double click they're using mousepad so they were using the XFCE application finder they're using mousepad which is the XFCE plain text editor so a lot of XFCE applications MC of course is midnight commander that's going to be a terminal based file manager I'll double click on it for those of you that have never seen midnight commander before it's been around forever it's one of the standard terminal file managers that's been available on Linux and other Unix-like operating systems for a very long time. Then we got this uh, file cabinet here that would probably be our file manager. Let's see if they're using Thunar, uh, which would be XFCE's file manager. They are not. They're actually using PC Man FM. They're actually using PC Man FM, the cute version. Okay. Um, not crazy about the cute theme or the on god set. This is really old school looking. This has a very retro feel. And then we've got this grid of like nine applications in this one box, including one that has the Netscape <laughs> uh, icon. If I click on it, it has something to do with Pale Moon. Pale Moon choose user profile. So they're going to use the Pale Moon browser. It looks like some, some of these icons. Is that a GIMP icon? I can't tell what that is. If I double click on it, would it actually launch something? No, uh, it doesn't look like it did anything. Double click this one. Ah, so the Debian one here in the, I just a very small icon. I don't know if you can see the little Debian logo that actually launches the Synaptic Package Manager, where we could obviously install anything that's available in the Debian repositories. By the way, this is based on the latest Debian, Debian Bookworm. Let's get rid of the Swiss Army knife stuff there, and then we have our clock, so I'm assuming that if I double-click this, probably give me a calendar. Yeah, it does. Uh, Orage, and that's XFCE, another XFCE application. So kind of standard on XFCE distro. So still a lot of XFCE stuff. And this is obviously a sys tray because we've got all these like battery icons, a clipboard icon. So let's see what clipboard manager they're using. Let's edit clipboard. Um, I'm not sure what program that is. And below that, that looks like a media player because it looks like I have a a button like to open a CD drive and then we got forward and backwards buttons if I double click nothing happens it's probably a front end to probably a command line uh, music player probably MPD or something like that and then it looks like this would be probably a mail client so let's double click on it that is Claws Mail not my favorite email client if I double click this this is Pale Moon once again so that would be our browser once we get it all set up and this guy on the surfboard Please tell me that is not Suckless's surf browser. <laughs> Are they actually shipping that? This might be the very first Linux distribution I've ever seen that actually ships surf, the surf browser, out of the box. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. And then below that, is that a Telegram icon? 
I double clicked it. It's taking a while. Telegram is an Electron app, though, so it's going to take a second to load, but that is Telegram. That's interesting, being proprietary software. Uh, well, the Telegram app itself is open source, but obviously the Telegram back end, the servers, is all closed source. But they're probably using that as a way to get support, I guess. Uh, maybe that's one of the, the channels they use for support is Telegram. And the computer icon here is the terminal. What terminal emulator are they using? Well, let me resize it. Let me grab that corner there. And let me zoom in. Yeah, well... I zoomed in. I guess if I zoomed in, I didn't have to drag the corner to resize anything. If I run xprop for x properties, a x window property, my cursor turns into an x. Let me click any window to get the properties of it. I'm going to click on the terminal window. And is this the XFCE terminal? No, it is the Mate terminal. So that is the terminal emulator they are using and then this button here with the uh, BSD devil that's interesting that's another terminal but that is root so you're logged in as root on that terminal and then finally this last button here is the synaptic package manager once again it's going to try to sync the repositories I'm going to cancel that because that may take a second one thing I would want to look for is I'm gonna to go to the application finder uh, wallpapers do they actually have wallpapers there's the XFCE desktop application go to background and uh, of course there is nothing set for a wallpaper so let's go into wallpaper stretch to fit the screen and then the path to an image so on Linux systems the directory that contains most of your default wallpapers is going to be in uh, the root directory. Obviously, you're going to go into slash user slash share slash backgrounds. There is not user share backgrounds, so they don't have any standard wallpaper packs already installed. I wonder if I could install some. I don't know how this will work in a live environment, but let's see. Let's see if I do a sudo apt update and and sudo apt install gnome-backgrounds. Just because I know that package exists, gnome-backgrounds, the gnome wallpaper pack that ships with the gnome desktop environment. Yeah, it's not going to be able to install it, I don't think, in the... Yeah, it, there it goes. It looked like some of the mirrors connection refused yeah so it's not going to be able to install that but if I actually had this installed I'm assuming I could install that wallpaper pack and then choose a proper wallpaper to get rid of this solid gray color background here so that is just a very quick and cursory look at the window maker live Linux distribution this is a very specialty distribution very niche not a lot of people are going to want to run this because honestly the only people that are going to want this are people that want to run window maker for nostalgia reasons right window maker i actually just looked up the initial release of window maker the first release of window maker came out in 1997 so not quite as old as i remember but it's window maker is a fork of a previous desktop environment called gnu step which was uh, a bit older. It was released a little earlier in the 1990s. So uh, it has its roots going back 30 years. I will say it's not the most user-friendly desktop environment because uh, the, the documentation, for one thing, the website, windowmaker.org, looking at the docs, if you go through it, you know, some of what they talk about, what they explain, uh, it's kind of confusing. There's a lot to it. The website, I don't think, is laid out as well as it could be because the website looks like it was also written in 1997. The other thing about Window Maker is there's uh, several configuration files to it. It's not all one unified config file. Like so many window managers these days just have the one config file that you set everything in that one file. Window Maker's got a few different config files. Overall, I do think Window Maker Live does serve a purpose. I do think it provides a nice alternative ISO 
for Debian. Not that Debian doesn't have a million ISOs. If you go to the Debian website, debian.org, and you navigate to where all their ISOs are, Debian actually has a variety of ISOs to choose from, but it's always nice to have alternatives. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Royal, Wes, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George, Lee, Methos, Nate, or Jan Paul, Peace, Arch of Door, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tools, Devler, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Window Maker Live, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters. Over on Patreon, I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. XFCE looks modern compared to Windowmaker. <laughs>